And all the years that I've been painting, I took some standing eight counts. Standing eight, it's a, it's a, breast, uh, it's a boxing term. When you get beaten up, you got a standing eight count. I took several of those. But because I, people didn't like your work? Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, Oh, you know, for me. Well, that must feel terrible when it, you feel it represents you and they reject it? Yeah, well, a lot of actors are like that too, right? They get rejected. So I just uh, uh, just created it. Yeah. So. so the confidence, you still have the confidence and, yeah. the, and the, well, tenacity is what you also mentioned. Yeah. And I'm still in the ring. I'm still in still, the ring. Yeah, I'm you still, got up. Yeah, I got up. <laughs> I'm still in the ring. Yeah. As a boy growing up in the plantation town of Waipahu on the island of Oahu, all he wanted to do was draw. As a young man living a bohemian life in New York City, all he wanted to do was create art. Today, he wakes up every day and still draws, still creates art. Harry Suchidana, coming up on Long Story Short. Long Story Short with Leslie Wilcox is Hawaii's first weekly television program produced and broadcast in high definition. Aloha mai kako, I'm Leslie Wilcox. How many of us can truthfully say that we're doing what we set out to do as a child? That we had a dream, followed through with it, stayed the course through thick and thin, and achieved the respect of our peers in doing what we love? Abstract artist Harry Suchidana, 84 years young at the time of our conversation in October of 2016, has spent his life doing what he loves. While Suchidana's stage series, a collection of abstract expressionist paintings, is celebrated for the use of straight lines that divide the canvas, Harry's journey as an artist was hardly a straight path. I was born in Wapahu, May 28, 1932, and I was born with an asthma. So I couldn't play with the rest of the other kids. So I started to trace comics. Tell me about um, what your parents did for a living, how, how you were raised, what we were had, they like? Yeah, we had a farm. We raised an uh, eggplant and a bit of melon. That's all we raised. And my mother was a very strong woman. They were illiterate. They couldn't write or read their own language. But they were strong will and uh, very religious too, and she always stop and pray. So I said to her, "Did you pray for me?" She said, "You're the first one." So I remember that. I understand. For much of your life, your mother only raised you, single mom. Yes. Your your dad had left. Yeah. What, what was that like? Because a lot of kids at the time had both parents in the house. Right. Well, uh, she wasn't. Uh, she saw me doing artwork. And she said to me, do like what you like to do best. And, I, and she never said anything about the bottom line, how you're going to make a living. She said, as long as you like what you're doing, that's the most important thing. And brother, sister? I have a brother. And my sister left. You know, so just my brother and I and my mother were there. So uh, yeah, we worked on the farm. And I always wanted to be an artist. I, always, I told everybody going to be an artist. You know, so. And what did they say to you? I don't know. <laughs> they did better grade than me. I didn't do too much grade in art, you know, because I thought I was better than the instructor. <laughs> in art? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not a good thing to do. Yeah. So you didn't get good grades in art? In other works too, other, yeah. yeah. But it didn't bother me. Grade didn't determine me how good I am, you know, so. You just always felt that you had this talent and you were going to use it. Right, yeah. Well, it's really tenacity, you know, stick to it. I was intrigued by uh, creating, by adding and eliminating. You know, I did a, there was a landscape and there were budge and there were some trees and there was nothing on the left. So I just turned around and looked and there was a mango tree. There. So I put the mango tree there. So I could move things, and that's the thing that fascinated me. In fact, when I was seventh grade, I did a tree, Wapo Elementary School. The tree is still there. I did a red and blue background, 
And the teacher said to me, her name was Mrs. Wong. She said, that's not a tree. But I said, that's my tree. Just as Harry Suchidana saw more than the literal tree, his vision for the future went beyond the eggplant and bitter melon crops in Waipahu. So what's next for a young man who dreams of being an artist? Well, how about the United States Marine Corps? Now, tell me why you joined the Marines. You, that's tough guy land, right? I mean, or, and tough women now, but wh why, why Marines? I saw a movie called Halls of Montezuma with John Payne and Maureen O'Hara. It wasn't like a movie at all. <laughs> <laughs> it was like cool hand look. <laughs> <laughs> really? So, so you enjoy the Marines? I, I stayed only three years, you know, but they, well, yeah, I really liked wearing. I developed alligator skin, you know, and... Uh, Why did you develop alligator skin? Because, you know, being a kid from Waipo, you're sensitive, everybody tells you something, you get hurt by it. You know, in a, in a service, you know, they kid you around, and, you know, you develop that. When I was stationed in Japan, in the enlisted man club, this person in charge said, you should have a show. I did some artwork, and, and then I got a note from a second lieutenant saying that you shouldn't be in the infantry, you know, you should be in GS too. So he transferred me. That changed my whole life, that second lieutenant. Because you were made a GS? Yeah, you know, and well, in the illicit makeup, there was a library there, and in that library they had an art in America, in the back of that art in America, they have all the list of art school, and I wrote to every one of them. Rhode, Rhode Island School, California, there was one, Chicago Institute. I wrote to National Academy in D.C. Harry Suchidana was accepted at the National Academy, which helped him get settled in Washington, D.C. A short time later, Suchidana enrolled at the Corcoran School of Art. But it was while Suchidana was at the National Academy that he met an unlikely tutor who directed him to study the work and creative techniques of some prominent French painters. There was a, a, a gallery named Philip's Gallery, and there was a man, that doorman, you know, when you walk in, they click you. And he and I became good friends. And he taught me everything I know today. He said, when you look at, when you do artwork, measure the eye distance from here to here, from here to here, from here to here. And to study Pierre Bonnard, because underneath all that color has the geometrical shape. And study Cezanne. I think he was a dark Italian or Armenian. He knew everything, but he couldn't paint. But he knew what artists for me to study? He says, study Serrat. He discovered the white light. If you, if you have the primary colors projected to a pinhole, it will create white. He taught me all those, uh, as a, just coming out from the Marine Corps, and, and uh, uh, all these things that they don't teach you in school. The indirect line that Harry Suchidana was following was beginning to straighten. The doorman directed Suchidana to seek out abstract painter Carl Nass, with whom Harry became close friends. By chance, Suchidana befriended another abstract artist, Hans Hoffmann. Suchidana's formal arts education was being supplemented with real-world advice and relationships with noted artists in the Washington, D.C. area. Then, one night, Harry Suchidana had a surreal moment. He believes that his late sister, who had died in an auto accident, spoke to him as he walked alone one evening. I felt that the sister that died in 1945 is my guiding angel. I think she's the one that talked to me in D.C. when I crossed on the street to move. Go to New York. Well, I think she's the one that did it. I'm sure she's the one. And I live close to the White House. And I was crossing one night the Pennsylvania Avenue to go home at, a, I was at Lafayette Park. And a voice came to me crossing the street. It said, you got to leave to New York. And I'm talking to the voice. I said, how am I going to do it? He said, write it down, what you're going to do, you know. And put, put a sign in a bulletin board in school, 
that you're looking for a ride to go there. And someone wanted my apartment, so it was everything he can own, everything to take me to New York. Well, but you hadn't finished art school. No, that was, yeah, that's right, I didn't finish school, art school. First day in New York, with the Whitney Museum, I see this guy, hey, you from Hawaii? That was Jerry Okimoto. First day in New York, and so told Robert. And, uh, and he, he wrote his phone number into my, and that was also the key to go to the place that all the artists lived. And, uh, and that's how I got to meet all the artists. They were all living in the same building? building. Yeah. Isami Do was on third floor. Tadashi Sato was on the next unit. Uh, Sato Rabe was on the fourth floor. You know, so Babu Chiko was on the first floor. At the time, did you know that there, there was this small movement of um, Japanese Americans from Hawaii to New York? Did you know that? I didn't know that. And I, you ended there too, with them, yeah. as one of the youngest. Yeah, one of the youngest. I didn't know, it just was there. Artists following their muse, I guess. Uh, it, 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 amazing how it turned out to be. Being the youngest, <clears throat> I was more of a listener than an observer, than a contributor. You know, and I learned a lot from them. What did you learn? Well, Isamido had an uncanny way of looking at art. He was very analytical, and he had that view. Love the landscape had that view. And uh, Tadashi Sato was, uh, I liked the way he used uh, uh, the form and the space and color. And uh, Sato Rabe did the sculpture, he did the form, the intricate moving form. That sometimes I apply in my work as well. And Jerry, to me, he combined up, up art and uh, pop art together, you know. And that's what a combination he did that. What about personality-wise? How did you guys get along? What did you talk about? Uh, well, we play cards a lot, pinnacle. And there was a corner bar, John's bar, and we used to drink there often, you know, so. Uh, well, these were the 50s, the mid-50s. Yeah. Um, what was it like for a, for a Japanese guy from Hawaii to be living there with other um, Asians? So how did, you know, was never, there prejudice? Yeah, I never thought of that, you know. I never thought that I was Asian and they were, you know. We just were there. You may have heard the phrase nature versus nurture in the debate over which has more of an influence on how we're shaped, our genetic makeup or our environment. In the case of abstract artist Harry Suchidana, his environment was clearly nurturing him as an artist, from his formal and informal education all the way to the guys with whom he played pinochle. He began expressing himself through photography and printmaking, and to make ends meet, Harry, as most struggling artists do, took a night job. It was perfect for me to be at the Museum of Modern Art. What did you do at the Museum of Modern Art? I was a night watchman. You were the night watchman. <laughs> did they know you were an artist as well? Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, uh, personal director Anita Borden was very, because there were a lot of Hawaii artists were there, working there, and they had a good reputation of being a good worker. I see. And when, so at night, as a watchman, you roamed the museum yeah. looking at art? Uh, looking at art. And there was one time when Pablo Picasso had a show there. Group, a lot of times the janitors of black people or Spanish, and they were discussing Pablo Picasso's work. <laughs> I said, that was terrific. Yeah. And so you discussed it with them? No, I just let them you know, go. But I can watch the curator setting up a show. A lot of work. They tear down the wall, paint the color for the paintings. Oh, a lot of work. And, and what was your plan at that time? To get married. <laughs> well, no, I don't know. I just, uh, uh, the excitement of being there, you know. And you were working on art on the side? Yeah, always. Always, yeah. always, yeah. yeah. It was after World War II that abstract art expressionism gained popularity in America with artists such as Jackson Pollock, Mark Rothko, and the aforementioned Hans Hoffmann leading the movement. 
loosely defined as a style in which the artist conveys emotion through non-traditional means, abstract expressionism had its center in New York City. Harry Suchidana's early abstract expressionist works had nature themes with organic shapes. His later paintings, most notably his stage series, took on a whole different style. Well, what kind of art had you been doing all this time? You starting when you were a little kid and, and going through the Marines, I'm sure you didn't stop. I mean, what, what kind of art had you been doing? A nature motif, like we did out, uh, sprouting. But in 1979, I depart from that. I did a stage series. Maybe, can I demonstrate? Sure. I think it'd be a good time to do it. Stage series, so non-nature. Non-nature, and uh, it's a, uh, uh, okay, now this is, okay, this, uh, let's see. Usually I use T-square, but this will do. Okay, this. This distance here took me a while to get that distance. The early ones, I made it higher. You see, this is eye level right here. So my view is right here. This is where it is, right there. And the vertical line, randomly I put this here. So you're actually drawing this and people would look off the paper. I mean, you, you're directing eyes off the paper, yes. above. Yeah, above, yeah, yes. Okay. Constantly, I'm aware of the distance. Constantly. Okay. Now, there's two areas right there, and there's another area. I'm breaking the space. That's what it is. There's an area there. Now, this is where the right here Okay. I have a T-square at home that my mother-in-law, when she passed away, was in that room. Oh. I use that every day. Okay. Now, this is the angle right here. This is the angle. And you put another vertical line here. This all, I did this 79. To this day, I still do it. It fascinates me and this angle right here. So constantly moving. Dave Soji do this every day, right? He looks things this way, he shifts things, yeah, so. When he considers what to do in his volleyball games, you mean? You, you know, the way he do get things from the angle. I see. Same thing apply. It applies to, it applies to you, right? In 360 <laughs> looking at things, you mean? Yes, yes. Except yours is on a linear plane. Yes, yes. Okay, this way, this way, constantly. After a while, I don't think like this. I just do it, you know, so. So you're trying to get people to look at, quote, all the angles. Yeah, all the angles from this to it. And the color, is, uh, then that's, that's another level. You know, because it creates a sensation when you put color next to each other. And I have eliminated a lot of people by doing the stage series. Why is that? Because there's no handle. There's no representational. So, so just look at the lines. They don't know what it is, right? So, so that's why it was important for me to demonstrate on that, to see the angle. So. I'm, I'm sorry, so I don't, under, I don't understand when you say there's no handles. Yeah. Handle means there's no representational. Then you can say, oh, that's a uh, that, that's a tree or you know whatever. So the uh, the uh, stay series, you know, there's no handle. It's just line. So y you weren't trying to make your art friendlier to yeah. the user, right? <laughs> right. And why is that? I don't you figure that's my business, not yours. <laughs> You're right. And I think reach more people. I felt more applies to more people. The stay series. You know, and you can reach more people even though they don't know what you're going for. Or are you trying to reach a different kind of person? Yeah, well, I don't know. I just did it, uh, hoping that they will see what I'm doing.
Harry Suchidana moved back to Hawaii for a short time, then to Los Angeles, finally moving back to Hawaii for good in 1972. By this time, the bohemian artist, while still following his passion, had a family to support, his wife Violet and his son Grant. And while Violet provided a steady paycheck by teaching, Suchidana worked a variety of jobs to help provide for his family. You became a father along the way. That's when we came back from New York. How did, how did that change you, having a son? Well, I did all kind of uh, jobs to support him because my wife, you know, was a school teacher, but she didn't work, you know, for a couple of years. Well, tell me about your wife and how she felt about being married to an artist. She was very supportive. In fact, she, you know, she's a school teacher, right? and she's the one that supported me, and that's the work that you see there. And she said, you know, keep an eye on the ball. You know, so she, she big help to me. Because you you didn't go out promoting your work and um, selling yourself. You yeah. you did art. That's what you yes. did. You're more you're a, more of a purist. Well, well, thank you for saying that. Yeah, I just created, you know, and I didn't ask anybody for help. I did all, I did um, about seven jobs in one year, and my mother-in-law said to me. She, I didn't know you knew many things. What kind of jobs did you do? Kamabuko. <laughs> oh, of, of, at a factory? Yeah. Kamabuko all, factory? All the Kamabuko factory. Uh, what did you do at the factory? You know the Kamabuko. You cut the end. <laughs> you cut the end. And the Tupperware. I was, uh, you know, the warehouse stacked that thing. And uh, uh, Waikiki, there was, oh, I work as a dishwasher. And uh, what else I did? I did all kind of things. Yeah. Did you um, enjoy all of them? I did. I had fun doing that. Really? I was an exterminator at Sheraton Hotel. Pest exterminator. Yeah, exterminator. You know, about one or two o'clock in the morning, the chef prepared for the next day. They put the salt, pepper, Ajinomoto at the time they used to put. Okay. And that gave me the idea. Then I put all the primary colors mixed together and then take from there and put the white and mix the white. And all the colors you mix with the white has all the colors. And that's how I got the idea from the chef. <laughs> but you know, when I was um, at the uh, Sheraton Hotel working, two o'clock in the morning, I push in the um, fogger. And I'm thinking, one day I'm going to have a studio. And one day I'm going to have a, you know, just paint. Walk in Carl Cabin at 3 o'clock in the morning. And I still had that dream. Still. <laughs> yeah. Harry Suchidana finally got that studio. He bought a condo unit for his family in Salt Lake on Oahu and also bought a second unit to serve as his studio. Fittingly, a sale of his art to the Hawaii State Foundation on Culture and the Arts helped to pay for the condo units. He also had some very handy real estate advice from land developer and art lover, the late Pandi Yoko Uchi. We lived in New York, you lived in LA, and uh, when you came back to Hawaii, how did you decide to live? Well, I was very lucky to get that condo, you know. How did you get the condo? Uh, in Salt Lake, right? Yeah, in Salt Lake. I knew that when I was in LA. Uh, Pandi told me that they're going to develop a condo in Salt Lake. And he said, well, you got to wait. When you come back, you have to rent a place and then, you know, to get that Salt Lake. That, that architect of that building was my wife, uh, classmate, husband, Mike Suzuki. And you, you do art every day? Every day. But do you have a, a regular schedule? Not a schedule. It's the... Uh, uh, I have a coffee, I read the paper first, and they read coffee, and they did that. And watch TV later on. <laughs> so you don't wait for inspiration, you're already working. That's Hollywood. <laughs> Hollywood waits for inspiration. I chase the bugger, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't wait for this. I come to them, okay. Do you think you're still getting better at art? Pumpe Akaji once said to me, I'm overproductive. But I always believe that the more you do, the more you evolve, you know? And I feel I'm getting better and better. 
even though some people don't think about it, but that's okay. <laughs> to, to getting better and better. But you love the process too. Yeah, process. It's not so, is, it, uh, is it more about the outcome or the process? It's the process. You know, the Eastern philosophy is not hitting the target. It's the getting the ball and ever and let go. You know, and then the uh, and the, the the scientific perspective is this way, but the East is this way. As you get older, you get wiser, <laughs> bigger. Famed artist Pablo Picasso once said, every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once we grow up. Harry Suchidana, who as a young boy drew his tree, grew up and remained an artist, one who found happiness and the admiration and respect of his peers and the public in doing what he loves and who still wakes up every morning and chases the bugger. Mahalo to Harry Suchidata of Salt Lake on Oahu for sharing his story. And mahalo nui loa to you for joining us. For PBS Hawaii and Long Story Short, I'm Leslie Wilcox. Aloha, ahui ho. For audio and written transcripts of all episodes of Long Story Short with Leslie Wilcox, visit pbshawaii.org. To download free podcasts of Long Story Short with Leslie Wilcox, go to the Apple iTunes Store or visit pbshawaii.org. You know, you said you developed an alligator hide when you're in the Marines because of all the put downs. Yeah. Have you developed that in art? When people don't oh, yeah. care much about yeah, this yeah. or that? Yeah I, yeah, I learned to cope with that. Yeah. In fact, when people insult me, said, you know, they don't like my work, I shake their hand, you know. I Do say, they actually say that to you? They don't like your work? Yeah. At my home. One was at two at my home. And one, you know, at, at the show. So I shake their hand. I said, I'm sorry, I caused your problem. <laughs> you know?